So today's topic is about the work, about the getting a job in Japan. And um, it's quite interesting because I don't have my co-founder with me. Um, because he's working in a Japanese company, and sometimes Japanese companies, you could do more than you expect. They are expecting you to work over time, and most time it's um, maybe two or three hours more than uh, normal time. So today, I will talk with you about getting a part-time job and getting a job in Japan. I already have experience getting part-time job in several areas, like a teaching job, uh, transport, um, like um, delivery job, kind of, and um, at the shop. So these are already I have experience in, and I can share my experience and I tell how you can get one if you want to get to get one. And about the getting a full time job, I have friends who got their full time job, and sometimes it's quite, it seems quite easy. Um, so I'll try to talk about the parts that kind of could help you to get your job if you are planning to get employed in Japan. So, let's say you have just arrived in Japan, and um, what should you do first? Um, I'm from Azerbaijan, so when I came here, there was almost no one from my country. So I couldn't find a part-time job for a, almost l four or five months. I didn't know what to do actually because I didn't know where to search for. I would I had like hot pepper journal. Probably you have seen it in the campus uh, around the corners where they have like pamphlets so in hot pepper you'll see there's um, pages where the part-time jobs are written inside the, your area if you're living in Kitaku or Minamiku or Higashiku so you will find different kind of jobs in this area so it's part-time jobs and um, here in Sapporo part-time job is paid almost from 890 yen as a minimum salary per hour and then it can go up based on what kind of job you do. So, first of all, don't search same places, I mean, uh, in those kind of journals, because it's quite difficult, it's meant for Japanese people. You won't understand anything what's written there, uh, especially if it's in Japanese, all right? So, my advice is, if you are from a country that has community here, Try to get in touch with your community and get jobs through them. Most time they have connections. They have already like uh, some people work for a while and then they get fed up working in the same place and then they change from one job to another one. But they still have connection to the previous one. So if you're from, I don't know, from uh, in Indonesia, Myanmar, uh, Vietnam, Pakistan, India, like a community that is quite a lot of people who live here in Sapporo. You can connect with them and then through them to get a part-time job. It's, I think, easiest way to get a job. Um, sometimes they don't even expect you to know too much Japanese. Maybe sometimes even uh, at the beginning, you can only have some greetings learned within like one or two days in maximum. So you can do that. And um, also, first time, you will have a Kenshu uh, sign on your... Uh, chest so it means you are in um, you're a newbie so it will take some time until you get used to do uh, that job so they don't expect from you too much but they expect from you that you will learn so what they teach you you will learn as a basic maybe not too much not too much expectation but as something over time you have to show them that you have uh, learned so the first thing that you do as you arrive in Japan, get in touch with your community and try to find a part-time job through them. So I think this is the easiest way that you could do. Um, I didn't have a community. So in my case, I was lucky because I knew Japanese and it could help you to get a part-time job in several areas because the Japanese people most time expect a foreigner not to speak Japanese, maybe sometimes at all, especially my face type, like Caucasian face. They don't expect you to talk any Japanese. Maybe if you are Chinese or Korean, you know some Japanese because they had taken classes in their countries. But those Caucasian face people, they don't expect. And if you have some level of Japanese knowledge, I would say you are pretty lucky. You'll get a job easier um, compared to the people who don't know Japanese at all. That's in my case. So first thing, you get connected. Another thing is, 
uh, as soon as you arrive in Japan, try to t learn some Japanese uh, words. Like uh, in Japanese, some words they are quite useful and you can use them almost in everywhere. Like onegaishimasu, which means please. You can use in almost any kind of cases um, to thank people, um, to ask them to do something, or um, kind of to feel your, uh, to, to express your feeling. And also sumimasen, it's also quite used a lot and it means um, something like sorry, but you can use it for even for greeting. When you just get into the room, you can just say sumimasen and they will understand as a greeting. And uh, you can use it in different areas. So, Japanese language is high context language. It means one word can have several meanings based on the context, based on the environment, atmosphere. So that's why if you learn some Japanese, it will help you to get in touch with Japanese people in a very short time. And uh, they're quite willing to communicate with a foreigner who understands Japanese. I have experienced it a lot. So if you learn some Japanese words and go to the part-time job search, it will make your uh, situation a bit more easier to adjust and to learn uh, to get a new job and get a part-time job um, so when i came to japan my first experience was working at a university call um, for from april until uh, september i couldn't find a job because i didn't know how to and i didn't have community here so it took me some time until I find a pamphlet on the wall at the central cafeteria of the university and I see that they are searching for a part-time job at the shop, co-op shop. And to me it was interesting. I wanted to know how uh, the system is working here. I, my faculty is a uh, business administration and economics. So to me, this um, management side of the, uh, the business in Japan or shops in Japan was interesting. So I wanted to know what's going on. and. I went um, to the job interview, taking that um, brochure, um, and I passed uh, because I knew Japanese and uh, I showed I have interest in this job and I started doing cashier job at the co-op. Um, when you go to an interview, prepare an keireki show. It, it means you will need to write down your personal information and also your previous job experiences and maybe even some kind of uh, in a very short your education uh, at Hyakuen shop they the 100 yen shops they sell a stack of uh, kerek show like an uh, standard ones that you just need to fill in so you don't need to hustle too much you can just buy one of them and apply with this uh, those uh, kerek show to several jobs so that's one way also let me tell you a trick. Uh, that's what I did with the first job. Uh, at Hot Pepper Journal, at the back of the journal, you'll see one white sheet of KREK show. So if you don't want to spend money for buying one KREK show just for one job application, if you're not searching for too many jobs, then you can just take it from the journal magazine, Hot Pepper, Hot, Hot Pepper magazine. That's where I find my first one and then cut it. Uh, fill it in and then apply with that. So that's a small trick that you could do with a magazine. Uh, so getting all those stuff, uh, documents and then uh, bills in paper. Paper in Japan is quite uh, widespread. So I think sometimes it could be quite useful. So the next thing is um, you can start searching for the jobs at the courses. I mean language courses. Uh, there are several Japanese language uh, language courses that they teach English. Um, I had experience with my um, neighbor. Uh, her husband just came to Japan. He didn't know any Japanese at all. And uh, we tried to help him to find a job through a Japanese job search company who could help him to find a job. But the, the company wanted him to know some Japanese. So we ended up talking almost uh, for one hour but they didn't seem to be interested uh, in a person who is not knowing any Japanese because they think it's difficult to find a job for him in konbini or in hotel or any, any other place. But uh, later I uh, heard that um, he was able to find a job at a language school because his native language is English. So 
they took him to a, as a teaching job, even though he doesn't know any Japanese, because the main purpose is he can speak English. So if you are from the European countries where your mother tongue is English or from US or from Australia or New Zealand, and you don't know any Japanese, don't worry because you can get job even though you don't know Japanese. It's um, kind of your strong point being a native speaker. And uh, there's a high demand for native speakers. Uh, if you go to the language courses, you'll find out that there are Japanese people who barely can speak English, but they teach English. Um, that's what I find some kind of a ridiculous situation. But um, as a native speaker, you can get in. Uh, there's also good news. If you're a native speaker, you will get more salary than a person whose uh, mother tongue isn't English. So that's a uh, plus alpha for the native speakers. So as a second uh, choice for finding a job, you can go to the find the courses that teach uh, English and try to apply for the uh, open spaces if they have uh, for the teaching English uh, as a teacher. So this is the second choice that you could do, and I already do it uh, in the course here in Sapporo. And um, another thing is, I did it almost two years before. Um, my scholarship was going to finish, so I, I wanted to find a job, and I started searching on the internet. Um, there is a website called Townwork, and uh, it's quite widespread in Japan, and... Um, they they have keyword ryugakusei so uh if the job part-time job has ryugakusei tag it will be uh, when you search for the job and you can just write ryugakusei in kanji which means foreign student um it will appear so then you can pick the job that you want and apply for it and as they are also considering foreign students there's high chance that you can get a part-time job in one of those uh, companies who are searching also foreign students. Uh, one of them is um, Hamato Unyu, sometimes Japanese call it Kuroneko, which means uh, black cat. It's a, a delivery company. They are uh, d d delivering small postal items here in Japan. And um, actually I find a job there it was quite convenient time. Uh, you could go all early in the morning from 5 a.m. until 8 a.m. And um, to me, it was perfect because I could, after that, go to the university. And after the university, I could sp spend my time by studying. So uh, instead of going to the part-time job. And it was paying pretty well. It's paying more than 1,000 yen. And uh, if you are working in night shift, you can also get like paid around 1,700 yen, depending from the... Uh, area that you work for so keep it in mind so if you are searching for part-time job i would say um, town work as a website is quite rich with the information where foreigners can find job there um, uh, so these are the information that i i share based on my own experience but also, we are also cooperating with a company called Jobkita. This is a Japanese company based here in Sapporo. And uh, their main focus is Hokkaido area. So it means they can help you to find a job here in Sapporo easily. But most time their demand is you can speak some Japanese because uh, those jobs that they're providing is in the convenience areas or in the hotels. So it's they're expecting you to speak some level of Japanese. So if you are searching for a part-time job and um, you know some Japanese, you can just connect with, with us and we can help you to connect with Japanese companies uh, through Jobkita and then you can do the part-time job. I think they're going to provide Jobkita will have, will have like a program to the, like a Jap specialized Japanese language program. Oh yeah, you're right. So Jobkita, actually Jobkita isn't just giving you a job. So if you are connecting with them, first of all, they will, they have a special language course where they're teaching you language used in a workplace, used in a part-time job. So it's an intensive course. 
it's not like getting a uh, language course at the university or at any other language course where you are learning general stuff but it's more about a focused language course for a part-time job or a job so you will learn words that is mainly used in the during your work and also they're also helping you to write a k-rick show so if you don't know know how to write you have no experience writing a k-rick show um your cv basically they will provide you with a course kind of where you can learn how to write your um, information about yourself to apply for a job so if you're interested in this kind of activities learn and then apply so there's high probability that they will connect you with a job in a very short time as soon as you get into the system so i would say it's quite um, safe and easy way to find a job here in Sapporo and uh, we have been cooperating with them for almost more than two years they are reliable and um, you can trust them and uh, they have showed results uh, up until now and so this is another way that you can get a part-time job here in Sapporo uh, I want to add something about the Japanese language course uh, I think they are not only providing like technical language stuff but I think they also provide like teach you manner in Japan it's not all about language right it's about manner yeah it's cultural stuff right yeah cultural stuff so another thing to add yes I agree with you actually you can also get those kind of um, courses inside the university um, there are some divisions that teach foreign students actually today I wanted to talk about also like not only the part-time job but also full-time job um, in Japan, expectation is getting a full-time job. Basically, for a university graduate, it starts from March. Uh, from March, uh, for example, to, in Hokkaido University case, um, big companies come to university. They do their speech and uh, gather students in their rooms. And the students, if they're interested, they start uh, applying for the jobs those companies are providing with. And those companies are helping them to write their own uh, uh, KREC show, write, um, go through the interviews, um, and um, kind of learn the person. Uh, there's something interesting. In my country, or what I learned up until coming to Japan is, uh, they pick you to a job based on your skills. So if you are an accountant, or you are a good accountant, you know, accounting programs, there's high probability that they will take you to the job. In Japan, it's a bit different. They are expecting you to be a good person. So when you're going to a job interview, they will start asking you what you did in the circles at the university or what did you do at the part-time job. So it's more, I would say, like, a, I think it's more like a star method of interview. So they will uh, ask you what you have accomplished, how you have accomplished, what you did, um, like asking you what was the biggest problem or trouble that you were able to fix by yourself and how did you find a solution for the problem and then how was your relationship with the team members if you had team members in it when you were solving the problem. So instead of focusing on your skills as a um, uh, professional, or a um, student who have graduated from a faculty, they're more focused on your personality. They're trying to learn, understand what kind of person you are. So that's quite important. If you're preparing for a job interview, get in mind that you will need to prepare yourself to ask uh, to, to answer those kind of questions uh, because Japanese are trying to understand what kind of person you are. So will you be easily adjusted to the team and work together or not? So that's number one thing. And um, so as soon as you get into the um, race of finding a part time, uh, finding a full time job. So from March, most time Japanese students start from uh, second, a uh, third year um, bachelor, third year March, they start um, finding for a job and end of the third year, they already uh, decide with it and the fourth year of the bachelor 
they just focus on writing their graduation thesis. So if you are a master's student here as a foreigner or you are a PhD student, try to start finding your job at least last year. Um, so you will have enough time. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to get a visa and apply for a uh, work finding visa, which is Shushok Katsudo visa, and, and then have one year left for your, in your chance to find a full-time job. And um, places for finding full-time job here in Japan is quite, um, I think, expanded for foreigners. One thing is you can use a university, Hokkaido University, for that purpose because there are divisions that are helping uh, students to get a job. Also, there are some divisions, they are uh, indirectly helping you to find a full-time job. And uh, it could be another way um, for you to find a job in Japan. Um, also, here, connections work quite well. So if, you, if your supervisor or if one of the professors that you know has some connection to the companies, uh, you can get a recommendation to the company through them and then get an interview and then get a job. So this is another way uh, I know some students who got their jobs through that. So it could be quite useful to have a good relationship with the Japanese professors or Japanese professional people and then they can connect you to the job. And um, actually, I don't know how much does it apply to the jobs or to the people but uh, in Japan, chokaihi, which means a uh, recommendation fee. So if people are uh, recommending you to the companies, I think they get some kind of fee. So it's a win-win situation for them. So if you know some uh, professionals who are connected to the companies, you can ask them if there could be a place that you could apply for a job in those companies. If you have good, of course, relationship with those Japanese professionals, um, it could be a uh, door for you to find a full-time job and um, actually um, another thing is I think LinkedIn in Japan works pretty well uh, Japanese people think about LinkedIn as a professional network of people and I uh, have relatives who got LinkedIn uh, job opportunities through LinkedIn even though they were in Japan and now they're working through that um, LinkedIn uh, job opportunity and I've also applied uh, to some jobs in Japan through the LinkedIn and I'm waiting for their responses. So you can get uh, employed here in Japan even though you don't know that much Japanese. Uh, if, you, if, you have, if you are quite wise enough to find the companies who are searching for internationals who are focused on one area, especially the internationals who are focused on Rike, which is natural sciences like uh, chemistry, biology, physics and mathematics, uh, I would say you will have more chance to find a job even though you don't know any Japanese. Especially software engineers here in Japan, IT engineers in Japan are in high demand. So if you're in that area or you have relationship into that area, or even if you know some kind of software for your research, you use it, you have chance to apply for a Japanese company or international company here in Japan and get employed here. So this could be another way using uh, online platforms, especially like LinkedIn, uh, to find a job in Japan. Also, there are some Japanese local uh, either platforms or job search companies who are focused on big companies. And if you are getting listed in their database, they will um, update you with the new applications and show you which kind of jobs they got. And if you would like, you can apply and then they will support you so you can get the job. So they're also getting fee for helping the Japanese companies find the proper employee. So you can uh, find the jobs through the platforms. Uh, one of them is indeed.com. I uh, know, oh, sorry, indeed.jp. Um, so you can apply uh, through that system and then find job through that. But it is not only one, there are several of them. And if you can search for it, um, they will appear. If you don't know how to do it, you can ask us, we can uh, advise and recommend you some uh, platforms where you can apply for. So this is today mainly from me as a foreigner finding a part-time job and then applying for a full-time job here in Japan. Um, actually by myself, um, I would say if you're alone, uh, 
and you worried about finding a part-time job or full-time job here in Japan, I would say don't, don't worry. Um, the purpose that we have, we are doing these uh, videos is trying to help you. And it doesn't end just by making a video and publishing it. So if you are feeling you are in difficulty, don't hesitate. You can connect us through our uh, web uh, Facebook page to gaijin.com or you can use our Facebook group to connect with us directly. You can just write to us, uh, to admins in the group, and we will respond to you in case you are feeling in difficulty. So this is about the finding a job and uh, a part-time job in Japan. I have announcement for uh, uh, this week. So we are doing again donation uh, of clothes and it will be this week Friday from 2 p.m. to 2.45 p.m. at the South Gate of Hokkaido University uh, Sapporo Christ Church. We have uh, negotiated with them so we are going to do our donation there and um, we are planning to do one more donation event uh, in December and hopefully we can do donation event in not only Sapporo but also Niseko as well. We are planning to do a uh, donation event in Niseko. If you are interested, uh, please contact with us because we are searching for a place where we could do donation in Niseko and we don't live in Niseko. So we'd like to get some information from you, which place would be good and what time would be good for you. And also, in December 11, we are going to have a flea market. Um, it has been a long time that we couldn't meet with people face to face. And we think it could be a good chance to meet people face to face, to do some trades face to face. So that's why we are going to uh, provide um, a, a flea market on December 11 at the Jobkita office. We will share more information this week on our Facebook page and on our Facebook group so you can um, join us there uh, it will be al almost for two hours and uh, you can find different kind of stuff there if you need something probably winter is on the way maybe you need some kind of heater you need some kind of hot dresses or uh, some other kind of stuff you can come and uh, we can have good time and you can do your uh, shopping with us so this is another thing from us and for the next week, actually, we think that if you don't know Japanese, you are in trouble here in Japan. You need to explain and you need to understand. So sometimes it causes troubles. So next time we are going to talk about the Japanese language and uh, maybe to teach you some tricks and to tell you what could be good, what could be bad, um, what to avoid when you're speaking, speaking Japanese. And... Uh, trying to decrease your trouble here in Japan as much as possible, trying to help you. Because we are a community here, and I think uh, there's an African proverb telling that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with group. So we think we want to go further, so we want to stick with group and create a strong community of foreigners here in Sapporo, here in Japan. So join us, let's have fun. Uh, so see you next week, Wednesday, same time. Bye-bye.